Hi, I'm Janet. After years of trying to figure out the film industry, making some gains, only to see them dwindling away, I finally got my shit together and I made $85,000 my first year in the film industry in Los Angeles. Creating a career in film does not need to be a struggle. You can start in your city. I want to teach you my process and teach you how to do it. You'll see that you really can live that extraordinary film lifestyle that only the film industry can provide. Let's go. I mean, I can't even imagine who I would be if I wasn't working in this business. Like, I don't even know. I don't think I would have liked that person very much, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know? Because, I mean, the way that this kind of happens is, like, you develop the person that you want to be mm-hmm. as you pursue your passion. So, mm-hmm. like, how did you mm-hmm. figure out that you wanted to become this person? Because I don't think mm-hmm. you didn't you didn't know you wanted this when you were working corporate stuff, right? Yeah. It just, for me, like, the corporate work was never a fit like that gave me a lot of anxiety that I, I just, I don't think I could do. I mean, I kind of feel like I would be a failure in that. I didn't know I I wanted to be that person that would be like, you know, successful in the corporate world. I wanted to be that person, but I'd go to sales calls and I'd be super stressed out and like the sales meetings and wearing the business suit and just being that whole corporate person. I was trying to be it. I wanted to be it, but that wasn't going to, I wasn't going to be successful doing that. I, I just could f- tell. And that's interesting. So I always thought that that's where I, what I was going for. And then I was like, wait a second. No, not at all. This is not going to give me the life that I want. I mean, and that's not even like who I was. And then I was really like, after a couple of years of, you know, being in the corporate world and adding to my retirement account and trying to make my numbers selling copiers, I'm like, um, okay, so what, who am I? <laughs> you know, if I'm not that, well, who am I? Cause I, I'm in Wisconsin at this time. I mean, it's like, there's no film shoots around. There's nothing going on that I can see kind of like for a lot of our people out there that, you know, I thought there was nothing. And of course there is stuff happening in Milwaukee. Now with friends and film, we have people that are working in Milwaukee and, <laughs> It, you know, got in the film industry in Milwaukee and used all of that to then move to LA. So, I mean, I didn't know that then. I'm not sure if it was happening back then, but anyway, um, I, it wasn't a fit. I think that a lot of people that get into the business just felt like a fish out of water when they were in their other job and they maybe did theater or, you know, they did something technical or something. And they're just like, this is what I love to do. And then all of a sudden, something happens. They watch a movie, they get, they talk, you know, there's so much now with the celebrities out there. They're like, wow, if I could do that, that'd be amazing. And then they're like, could I do that? (laughs) And I'm here to tell you that you can. (laughs) Absolutely. Part of it is like getting, um, like realizing that it's possible, Mm. you know, like having that, like not even like even before belief, but just like seeing, seeing somebody else do it or seeing somebody else achieve something great and that plants a seed within you that's like, oh, if they did this, then like, what, what am I capable of, you know? So. Yes. Yeah. Um, as I was moving up inside the industry myself, I would find people that had done what I wanted to do. And uh, like producers that worked in Africa that were doing wildlife stuff. And I'm like, you know, going into their house and it's just like I had imagined you know there's like pictures of animals and there's like maps and it's like all wood and it was just like this is the real McCoy you know these are the real people and um I'm like wow this really does exist because all I had done is I mean I was on a safari and um I'm just so into it I'm just feeling like you know it was it was not like I'm so interested in the animals it was more like I I like this life. Like, this is just a fit. It's like, I could be here all day. Like, I feel like I just started like living my life on the safari. Like, you know, this is my, where I'm supposed to be like living in a tent, seeing this stuff, getting up in the morning, riding it. I mean, I'm just like this. I never felt like that anywhere, anywhere else. So I was like, this is my zone. And that was amazing. You know, I mean, I, I mean, 
I, I still can't describe that feeling anywhere else, not even in, you know, LA. Like, you know, I love what I do now, but I still, there's some kind of connection I have to the African bush. Just freaking love that. That's so cool. So <laughs> like for, for our listeners that may not know your story, how did you end up in Africa? How did like, mm. okay. So corporate job, um, sucked and I was just like, can't do this anymore. And, um, I had met, I went to this bar, um, I went after a hockey game. So, you know, I was so depressed. I mean, all that we do would, we'd go to work. I come home, I watch soap operas. And then on the weekends I go to the bar and drink all weekend and then just hate to have to go back to work again on Monday. Oh God, I hated it. And I hated fluorescent lights and, uh, but that, you know, I hated it, but I wasn't thinking about anything else because I'm like, this is all that I know. And this is what you have to do. This is what being a grown up is. Then I met somebody in a bar and I'm like, in this bar that after this hockey game stuffed to the front, all, we're all of us in, the, in our big, like, um, winter coats. a big winter coats, every a bunch of like snowmen all like pushing to their, trying to get to the front of the bar to get their beer. And there's this guy behind me and I turn, I think I get my beer. I turn around and, and you know, it's kind of good looking guy and I'm single at this time. And I'm like, Hey, uh, I don't know what I said. Hey, did you get your beer? <laughs> it's probably something like that. And, um, so, um, I just started talking to him and he's like, yeah, I just got back from a year of travel. I've been all over the world. I went to India, went to Nepal, um, just came back from Germany. He's like, my job sends me all over. But then I took a year off and I traveled all over and Hey, if you want to see some of my photogra photographs, my sides, I'd be happy to show him. I'm like, Oh yeah, for sure. So he invites me and my friends over to his place and we looked at all of it like his slides were amazing like they put, put them on the wall and stuff so um like photos yeah, like... yeah. they're like uh, there's a slide projector which uh... doesn't exist anymore but yeah and then you'd see these slides up on the wall and um then he would say okay this was in when i was in Kashmir, and this is where i was in nepal and we hiked this trail and Wow. And I'm just like, oh my God, that's amazing. I mean, I never knew anybody that did that. I never knew anybody that would like quit their job. I mean, I thought that what's responsible is to stay in a job and work and move up. And I thought that was the most exciting thing to do. Although I wasn't really enjoying that too much. I'm like, you got to do it. You have to force yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I was like, wow, uh, there's a lot more that people do. That really opened my eyes. And so then I was now starting to get very dissatisfied. <laughs> After I saw that, I'm like, uh, there's a different life out there. I haven't been seeing here in Wisconsin and I want to maybe go do that. But you know, I, it took a while to make the decision. So I, I, I tell the story a lot. When I was in the basement cafeteria of my copier job, uh, right on the state capitol, capitol building, the Bank of America building, in the basement cafeteria, having my coffee and donut, and I'm just like, this is the highlight of my day. I'm like so happy to have it, you know? And I go, wait a second. This cannot be the highlight of your day. You're only 25 years old. You gotta change your life. This, this is really a warning sign if this is the best time of your whole day. So I was like, I'm quitting my job. And I let my manager know, I let everybody know. And they're just like, what? You're doing what? You're gonna travel around the world? I'm like, yeah. And they're like, oh, okay. And they're like, okay, I didn't know people do that. I'm like, I know me neither, but I met this guy that did that. And um, they gave me a pair of Birkenstocks as a, a gift, a go away gift. And uh, I wore them all over the world. So I never saw Birkenstocks before. I'm like, these are interesting shoes, super comfortable. <laughs> that's so cool. I want, I want to get some. Oh, do you? Yeah, some they totally, yeah. They, oh, that's so your vibe. <laughs> You're telling me about them. I wanted some now. I used to have some too. Yeah, it's your vibe. Where was the, where was the first place you traveled to? Okay, so that guy that I met in the bar, <laughs> he did turn into my boyfriend, yes. So <laughs> I went to uh, New Zealand with him, and then we went to Mal no, we went to Singapore, then we went to Malaysia, and we traveled together. Then he went back to New Zealand because he was working there, and then I took off for Indonesia. 
Now that was by myself. Now I started traveling by myself. So that's where I really consider that's where the real travel started. Cause now I'm on my own. This was definitely a developing country, Indonesia, especially 25 years ago or 20 or more than that even. Um, yeah, it was polluted tuk-tuks and just, it was developing country. What are tuk-tuks? Yeah. Oh, well, those are, um, they're still around. They have them all over the world, but there are these like, well, uh, they're like they build a, they, they take a moped and they put this whole back on it in a seat so that you can put two people in the back on this moped, a body, and uh, it's like a tricycle, but motorized. And they, you know, it's just, they, you see them like like where they're weaving thing. around. I mean, there's just a whole bunch of tuk-tuks like going down a road and then maybe very few cars. It's like a taxi or like that's they use instead of cars. It's like tuk-tuks. open air though. Like you're uh-huh. just sitting there and it's right. You're right in the open. Like, very dangerous. If somebody, if a car hits you, you know, you're going to be, it's like you're on a motorcycle, but of course never thought about that and nothing ever happened either. But the pollution was really bad. But anyway, um, mm-hmm. Yeah, was Indonesia that, was awesome. Was that scary, like doing it on your own? Or no, were you, by that time no. you were already prepared and like excited for it? I was just excited. I, I just felt like, um, oh, I'm living now. Oh, I'm experiencing it all now. And I'm like, this is going to make me interesting. This is going to make me, like, I felt that I was so boring. I don't mm. know. I probably was. You know, I hadn't done much. I was just like school and then my first job selling copy machines. So I was learning a lot and I, you know, I wanted to grow. I was 25 at this time. So, um, yeah, I wasn't really scared. I think when you're in your twenties too, you're kind of not really so scared because you have all of these, like, what do you call it? Hormones that are just like, I can take over the world. Nothing bad ever happens. I'll live forever. So I wasn't scared. I'm just like adventure. I'm into it now. That's awesome. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, you had this. Then, have you had experiences like this as well? Oh, heck yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, you're like, I'm in the zone now, man. This is like so But I, I also I also feel like, at least for me, there is kind of like, uh, what's the word? Like a bit of apprehension before the excitement. You know what I mean? I guess that's just stepping into the unknown or, you know, yeah. stepping into something new. Yeah. Um, like for example, like, I don't know, before, before stepping on stage or maybe like one of the first times before, um, you perform, there's like that initial, like, oh dang, like what the heck's going to happen? Like, I don't, I've never done this before, but then, yeah. yeah. And then, but once you're actually up there, once you're actually doing it and you're in the groove and like, you're doing what you know, yeah. then that's like the, that's what you're talking about. Like when you're just like excited like in the zone and just, um, yeah, just yeah. like part of the adventure. Yeah. And, you know, you picture it to be like, you know, what you see in the movies, most of us just picture it to be like this. You're on your own and, you know, you're going to be like scoundering for food and (laughs) I don't know, like negotiating for everything and barely staying alive. But it's not really like that because there are people, travelers, some of the, our listeners will definitely know that all over the world, like in every single like place, um, you know, Macedonia to um, some of, you know, Bali. I mean, Bali is very touristed place, but, um, you know, Madagascar, you know, very remote places. But there are travelers. There's people from New Zealand and Australia and the UK. I mean, these people travel like they take a year and they travel. So this is just normal. So there's all these Mm -hmm. travelers with backpacks and they're just all around you. So it's like, hey, where are you going? Can I tag along? And they're like, yeah, where are you from? It's just like the, it's so great. Cause so that, that's really interesting yeah. because so now you're, you're bringing up two different, um, so before when you were working in Wisconsin in the corporate, in your corporate job, mm-hmm. you were surrounded by people that had never done anything like that before. And then yes. all of a sudden you put yourself in an environment where that crazy wild thing is mm-hmm. normal to so many people. I just think that's really fascinating how like, yeah, it's like you're, when you, when you get a new thought and you change your environment, then all of a sudden, I guess like what's normal, um, changes. Is that, do you hear what I'm saying? Oh yeah. Um, yeah. It all of a sudden, that's how you get new thoughts. Mm -hmm. You know, this is kind of Mel Robbins concept. She's like, just take an action. 
Just take the action. As soon as you think of it, take the action, and then you're going to have new thoughts. I can see that. I, I think that that does work because you're taking it, and all of a sudden you're like, you see new things, you experience new things, you have different kinds of conversations. So I think it's really great to do that. Um, Try new things. Yeah, you know, one thing I, I'll say just related to the film industry and getting into the film industry um, is when people are starting to get into the film industry, they are trying so hard to get in and trying so hard to get their talent and kind of prove themselves and make content. And that's where all of their brain is going, like towards how can I get in? How can I, you know, move forward? And they're kind of limited in that. They're kind of in like this cycle of how can I, how can I, how can I? And they never really get the answers. And their creativity is limited because they only get so far. And what I really want people to do is I want people to get on these big sets and then now that's their environment. Now they'll have new thoughts. So kind of throw them in and have all these new thoughts now of like, oh my gosh. So now it's not like I'm trying to get in all the time. Now I'm here, I'm in. I, now you're like, oh my gosh, I have so much to learn. I mean, this is so amazing. All these tricks and people and softwares and, um, you know, experience all around me. And you're like, wow, I wanted to do that. And now I see really what's involved in doing that job. But creativity explodes because it's like now you, you have permission to now be like, okay, what actually is possible that I can do here in this environment? Anything. I mean, people around here have done everything and are doing anything and they know everybody. So... I'm like, hey, creativity, use that film industry as your platform to take off, which is a different concept than most people are thinking. Film industry is so scary. I've got to be so good to get into it. Now I'm saying get in there and then know that you're using it for you, which is a shift. It's a frame of mind shift. So, you know, um, that's going to get you somewhere because now you are creating your life freely and knowing that your thinking is what's creating the whole thing something cool that. something cool on that topic that i've experienced mm -hmm. um i worked on about five short films mm -hmm. like one after the other uh, consecutively mm -hmm. and it was just so freaking cool because like each one was a completely different story and like uh, like it was it was cool like you know, I spent like three days on in one universe in one cool like, um, you know, one cool universe that these this group of people crafted, and then mm -hmm. I got paid to hang out there, and then like or like you know to work and do a good job, and then um, I got I went into a to totally different universe with totally yeah. different a totally different story, totally different characters, totally different personalities, and it's just crazy. I don't know how else to describe it. It's like. I mean, like, you I, you might get a similar sensation if, like, you watch a horror movie and then you watch a comedy right afterwards, but it's different because you're actually in the creative process instead of, like, the consuming process. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Or maybe it, it could be similar to traveling, too, like, if you go from, I don't know, from Asia to Europe or something, like... Well, I mean, I was just thinking about what, what, what you're saying, and I'm like, this is why we love the film industry. If you like variety... Uh, you live like a thousand lives in like a week, <laughs> you know, you just experience so much. I mean, in one day you can be like in five different locations and shooting completely different scenes mm -hmm. and spots with different characters and different people. And one, you know, now you're doing special effects. Now you're doing some car stuff. Now you're doing something that might have, that's going to have some animation. You got visual effects or whatever, you know, now you got fire, you know, dealing with fire. Now you got smoke, you know, it's just like, it's, and now you're at boxers and now you got, you know, like Simone Biles is popping over. It's like, okay. I mean, this is you know, like within a week, you're like, oh yeah, what did I even do this week? What was Monday? Right. But did I work on Monday? Uh, yeah, it's, it's really cool like that. So I, yeah, yeah, totally agree. I think that's, that's good. That's a good part of the industry. You know, I mean, that's one of the reasons why I love it. I mean, that's what you just start articulated. Yeah. Um, but like going back to, um, I want to hear more about um, when you were traveling and so you ended up in Africa yeah. and you, you noticed a National Geographic's film crew, right? Yeah. And, um, yeah. they weren't from National Geographic, oh. but no, they're just a film crew yeah. that liked National Geographic. So mm -hmm. wildlife um, filmmakers, they were wildlife filmmakers. Yeah. And they were traveling around. This was in Kenya. 
uh, and they were filming a tribe. And we were in a safari truck, bunch of young tourists, and uh, we stopped to watch the Kikuya dance as well. And I was like, oh my God, that's a great idea. Holy shit, I could do that. I could, I could I, that's what I could do. I could, so I go over there and I talk to them. I'm like, hey, this is what you guys do for like a living? And they're like, yeah, next we're going to Uganda. I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm like a camera, sound, producer, very small crew, had some equipment there, but not much. And I just like, that's what I want to do. All the, you know, cause I was really trying to figure it out. Cause I'm just like, I'm running out of money. This is getting scary. I, I don't really want to go back to, you know, the corporate uh, world. Uh, no, I'm not that person anymore, but what could I do to keep me traveling? I'm like national mm. geographic. This is what I could do. So between, so, between you had that, that thought of, of becoming a national geographic filmmaker mm -hmm. and when you actually left, to go traveling, how much time had passed? Oh, that was like two years. Okay. Yeah. So within two years, you became a totally different person with totally different goals. Yeah, maybe it was like a year and a half. Cause yeah. I, yeah, I think it was a year and a half because then it, it was about a year in Africa, um, getting into the film industry. So mm -hmm. that was in South Africa. So about a year and a half, and then I got the idea, and then I went to South Africa, and I'm like, okay, I'm like, how am I going to do this now? Mm -hmm. I mean, this is where it's. It all originates from for Africa. So it's happening here. Somehow I got to get in and meet people here and do this. But I didn't know how. Mm. Yeah. It's so fun to do this, to, to be like blank slate. Yeah. <laughs> how do you do something? For sure. <laughs> and, and guys, like, listen, so this is basically like Janet did all the hard stuff. And now she's teaching us how she would have done it. Yeah. Oh, I made a lot of mistakes. Oh yeah. 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 For sure. It kind of helped that I was making these mistakes, um, in a country that, you know, I don't care really, <laughs> you know, like I, I it was, I, I did kind of have that in the back of my mind. I'm like, this counts, but it doesn't count that bad. I have had a lot going for me because I mean, you know, I already have this free lifestyle. I'm already homeless, so I don't have to worry about like, you know, losing my home or something or any risk like that. So I think this, and then also it's just normal to just decide that you're gonna go to this country and go and figure it out. So now it's like normal that I'm gonna go into the film industry and now go figure that out. I'm like, okay, I'll just do that again. I'll apply what I already did here. It's already kind of like, you know, it's what you do. So. I, I love uh, introducing this way of thinking because I think it makes it a lot easier. You know, it's like, you want to do it? Okay, you can. Even just somebody telling you that. I mean, it makes a big difference. Some people, some people don't hear that. They don't have that, yeah. you know? And yeah. What was, your, uh, what was your first National Geographic production? Do you remember? I don't really remember, but I think it could be the one in Long Beach where the guy was out on surfboards and, um, and we were filming this guy in surfboards and I had a microphone that I wrapped in condoms and stuck out the top of his, um, wetsuit. Mm -hmm. And it sounded like crap. And I'm like, I hope this works. This is why I mean, I called all around all to my mentors. I'm like, how do, what do you do this? How do you do this? And they're like, well, take a microphone, put rapid and comedy. them. So I'm like, really? Uh, wow. yeah. In fact, you can still do that. I mean, you mm -hmm. just take it, you got to wash off any of the stuff on it. So that it's just rubber or get, you know, unlubricated ones. And then you just tape it up with waterproof tape. Uh, and then there are some mics that I have that are just like, I don't care about them. They're, they came with a radio mics, you know, a thousand dollar thing. You get a thing for, that's worth like 85 bucks. So I'm like, I'll throw that in the salt water. I don't care. So sometimes I just use that instead of doing that. I've done it before. Mm. This is what they do. But then they also will, when you're, you're trying to get real sound underwater, they'll use a big diaphragm mic and they'll cover that in a condom as well. Or there's underwater mics you can actually buy mm -hmm. and get, or rent, rent is better. But anyway, yeah, I just remember that. I'm like, I'm working for National Geographic now. <laughs> this is so cool. Like, I am National Geographic. Yeah. I made it. Yes, it's one day, one day, one day, but it's a start. I mean, that was huge to me because I'm like, you oh, got that on your yeah. resume now. I mean, that, that's what you did. Nobody else I was working with in the interviews and the documentaries and the entertainment stuff that we were all doing, you know, um, in LA, nobody was working for National Geographic. Mm -hmm. I made that happen. 
Wow. So even yeah. within, so by this point, you are already established in the industry. And yes, it took some time because, mm -hmm. you know, they're not going to just hire me just because I say, I want to work for you guys, you know, and I knew that I knew I needed to have some skills, equipment, I, you know, I need to get hired by them to do a job. So you got to be good at your job and be able to provide that service. So, um, yeah, there is a whole story on how I got into National Geographic. We'll do another podcast episode on that one, I think. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, because th th there's a whole thing about that. Um, but um, I, I would say that working for National Geographic and Discovery Channel and Animal Planet and Living Edens and all these wildlife companies, that life, amazing. That life was even better than I thought. Like, I kind of hoped what I thought it would be like, but, you know, it was just ugh, so fun to be paid to go and they set it all up for you and you're like there, like right where the wildlife is. They get all the permits, you're right there firsthand, just watching animal behavior. It's exactly what I wanted, you know? And to get paid and to be, you know, be a part of that. And, uh, you know, flown in, like we stayed in this, we did this in the Amazon, the Brazilian, I haven't been to the Venezuelan Amazon, which is the most beautiful Amazon, the Peruvian Amazon, which is nice. And then the Brazilian Amazon, the Rio Negro, which is where we shot piranhas and we shot them in Venezuela too, in that Amazon. Um, but the Brazilian Amazon, where you were in the you know, Rio Negro river on a houseboat, not even houseboat, it's like a boat and there's no house. <laughs> All it is is um, hammocks that go across the boat, and that's where you sleep. Like, everybody sleeps in their hammocks. So you're just like, camera person, myself, the producer, the cook, the guy that ran the boat. And so we're all just in this hammock. But it's like, this is life, man. This is like chugging down the, am the Rio Negro. Oh my gosh, so amazing. And, um, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. yeah, these, just all of these experiences that you have with these film shoots, they accumulate and then you meet more people that are like, what, you just came back from the Amazon? Wow. Are you available next week? So it makes you stand out. So the more that you mm -hmm. do, the more interesting that you do become. That's what I wanted to be was right. interesting. Yeah. That's what, that's the next the topic I wanted to ask you about. <laughs> Cause one of the reasons that you've told me, I don't know if we mentioned it on this podcast yet or not, but when you do things that other people don't do, it mm. makes you more valuable and interesting. And that mm. is the way to attract like amazing opportunities and people into your life. Yes. So true. Um, so like you, you, <sighs> orig on that. you originally like deciding to leave your corporate job and cash in your retirement and travel mm -hmm. the world. You actually did that with the intention of making yourself more interesting and more valuable, right? Or no? That's exactly right. How did okay. you know that? <laughs> you told me before. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you really want to know the reason, it's because I wanted to find a, like a really great man. Mm. Did you know that? You do um, know? No. No. Oh. Yeah, I want to find a really great man. So I wanted to, I really wanted somebody that was going to be like a, like a, um, you mountain, a mountain man. man. Yeah. So you have heard a little bit about that. Yeah. I wanted a mountain man. I wanted a traveler. I wanted an amazing person, a sweetheart, like a mate, you know, this is just, I have this picture in my mind of the man that I wanted. So I'm like, you got to be interesting and world traveler and, you know, go getter to attract somebody like that. So that was why I was really motivated to do it. I think that this is probably like a, a very common motivation, right? Is it, or is it just me? No, it's me too. Yeah, see, oh. <laughs> I, think, I think it's like when you're in your 20s, you're like, I want to become something to attract a good person so I can have a great life. I mean, I think that's, yeah. So that was really my motivation. Mm -hmm. I wanted to find love. And uh, that's why, why I wanted to get in the film industry, too. I'm like, hey, they'll probably find the most amazing person in the film industry. So that was part of it, too. So I think that, you know, doing things that other people don't do, it wasn't really the motivation. It was just more like 
that seems like fun and that would make me different and th mm. and I'll probably meet people like that like that and um, you know I so it makes all sense to me mm -hmm. you know you certainly can't lose by going out there and seeing the coolest things in the world you know going for the greatest job in the world I don't think you can lose by doing that no it's a good idea. <laughs> That's why I tell people to do it all the time. You know, do it, do it. Uh, just uh, yes, don't be caught by your doubt. Just you, it's all worth it. You know. Yeah, that doubt. It's like, what do we do with the doubt? The doubt. <laughs> well, um, I talk a lot about that. So the doubt is just coming from a part of your brain, and I have it too. And it's the, the, the doubt, the anxiety, the negative self-talk, the, all of, you know, that's because we all have the primitive part of our brains that wants to keep us safe. The primitive part of our brain wants to avoid pain, wants to go towards pleasure, and it wants it to be easy, doesn't want to have to work too hard. And when negative things come up or fear comes up, it wants to avoid that pain. So it's like, oh, I shouldn't do that and maybe I won't be successful doing that. It just, it fires really strong on what could go wrong and how you could get hurt because that primitive part of your brain is trying to keep you safe. But then there's the thinking part of the brain that's called the prefrontal cortex. And that's a part of your brain that imagines this life that you want and says, yes, I know that I'm gonna be scared. I know I don't know anything. I know that I'm gonna screw up probably, but more than that, I want this life. I want to learn that stuff. I want to meet those people. Mm -hmm. I want to grow. I want to grow. So as part of this, um, you always talk about how like, like when you, you're always like, oh, that's money. When you talk about um, the mental and emotional mastery. And so like there are, I mean, it's so common for people to get stuck in whatever job that may be familiar to them. You know, the survival job just because because of that. Um, you know, their mind's wanting to keep them safe and what's familiar and what's like the known. Um, but you guys, like all the cool stuff is in the unknown. You, like if you want to become the person that you want to be when you actually start following your passions and like letting that path unfold, that's like, you have to, you have to move past the doubt and like actually be honest with yourself about what you want and take action towards it. And I mean, like, it, it's, it means one thing, like, you know, coming from me, you're listening to this on a podcast, um, but it, it feels different when you actually see it inside of yourself, when you actually make that mm -hmm. internal decision. Yeah. That's like, it's like magic. I mean, it feels like magic to me. I don't know, maybe feel different to you, but it okay. feels like you have a superpower and it's like, oh my goodness, like, it's just, everything's falling into place exactly the way it needs to be. Or maybe like, not exactly how I imagined it. Like it's happening a lot more messier than I thought it was. Or maybe like, oh, it's happening a lot more fluidly than I thought it would, you know? I think it's kind of a blend of both. <laughs> I love how you just described that. I, I mean, I just know, I, I have this concept that I was thinking about just last night because I could not sleep for a couple hours and my brain was just churning on all sorts of thoughts. And um, I just laid there thinking, well, this is the human experience. You know, it's, all, it's not all like growth and so excited and yay for tomorrow. It's all sorts of things. It's, mm -hmm. it's positive and negative. It's disappointment. It's fear. It is self-doubt. It's anxiety. And it's joy and it's growth um, and it's creation. But the concept of that life truly is 50, 50, 50% 50 positive, 50% negative calms me a lot because when I'm laying there spinning in anxiety or fear, um, and we all do, then I can actually go, it, it makes me, instead of just being in it and like going like, Oh, this is a horrible night. I go, Oh, you actually can actually experience this right now consciously and uh, feel fear, feel the disappointment, feel the anxiety. I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna allow it, I'm gonna allow it. And then I have peace. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm like, well, life is 50-50. That right there is a 50%, so you, you're gonna enjoy it. So the, the great thing about uh, being like, 
like being okay or noticing, oh, this is the 50-50, it's not like things are so bad, then you know you just actually fully experience it. And then you start noticing, okay, now I'm feeling great. This is the positive side, yay. Oh, there is the negative side. And it's amazing when you start to notice it, how it's like even back and forth throughout the day, like all the time you're like, oh no, no, I feel more negative. Now I feel positive. And, um, it's, it, and, if it, and then it's all okay. You know, mm-hmm. it's all okay. Another way that I like to think about that, the 50-50, mm-hmm. the, the way looking at the world, I, I visualize it like the, the feelings ebb and flow the way the waves do at the ocean. You know, mm-hmm. like there's like, there's high tide and there's low tide. There's like the up mm-hmm. and the down. And, but the thing is like the water is always moving. Like our emotions are not fixed. They're all, they're constantly moving and changing. And when you bring awareness to that, when you actually notice it, instead of being swept away yes. by the waves, you understand it and you can, you can ride them. And so like, if you understand the way the, the wave is moving, that's what gives you the sense of peace and control because you understand that you have a certain amount of control over, over all of it. And you know what I mean? Like even if the, the, the negative or positive feeling is there, um, you can intentionally still take steps that will get you to where you want to be, or you don't have to, um, you don't have to be a victim to it. You know, you don't have to be a victim to negative mindset. It's just, yeah, um, yeah. you're not, you're not in it. And like, mm-hmm. holy shit, this is a really bad night. It's more like, oh no, this is the human experience. Right. And I'm, I'm going to actually feel it and experience it now. Mm-hmm. And then you're kind of like, oh wow, well, what is that going to be like? Welcoming it in. Okay. And then you do that. And then, then it's, it's over. It's not, it's like you don't compound it because there, if life is 50, 50 positive and negative, and then you accept it and you truly experience it, then you're not mad about being upset. Mm-hmm. You're just like, oh yeah, last night I, I had some anxiety. You don't go like, oh man, I have anxiety and it was so bad and I couldn't sleep. And now, mm-hmm. you know, you're not like, and I hope that doesn't happen again. You're like, oh no, it, you know, life mm-hmm. is this way. Yeah. And that's, that's important that what you just brought up, because you guys listen, like when, when it's one thing, when you experience a negative emotion, like that's going to pass, but it's another thing. If you beat yourself up about feeling bad, like if you make mm-hmm. yourself worse, that is totally in your control. Like, you know, and I used to, I used to be like that. Um, and I used to be like that too. Like when we would get caught in a, what like the negative feedback loop. Um, but there are ways that like, when you bring this awareness to what we're, what we're talking about, how, when you just accept it as what it is, instead of like beating yourself up about, about being, about feeling bad, then that's when life, like that's when you level up. That's when you, um, do you have an example yeah. of this? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Like, I mean, there's a season in my life where like I was depressed, I was sad. And the, one of the reasons why I was sad was because I kept saying like, I was sad, like over and over again, like in my head, you know what I mean? It You're was like, like I'm sad. Yeah. This is, okay. Like, Oh, like this sucks. Like, um, mm. you know, life sucks. Like I hate myself. Um, and I was just, th- there were my internal mantras that I was just repeating. Yeah. And then I, um, I got to a point where I realized that the reason why I felt that way was because I kept reaffirming that I kept like telling myself I was sad and then I hated myself. And I was like, Oh, so like if I just change that internal dialogue to like, Oh, like God, I'm so grateful to be alive or like, I'm so like, I'm so happy and grateful that, um, I woke up this morning and that I, you know, that I'm breathing then that is a completely different way to live your life. You know what I mean? And that's what, um, that's what I had to do to go on this trajectory. And you found the answer, or you, you, st- you found the new thoughts that you did not have before by mm-hmm. listening to Ram Dass. Yeah. I listened to a bunch of the first person I actually listened to was Les Brown. Mm. Yeah. Les Brown, the motivational cool. speaker. LB triple P a platter playing Papa. <laughs> <laughs> well that done. Dude. Um, cause I literally looked up like less Brown depression and, um, yeah, hearing his story and understanding that anything is possible, that our dreams are possible and attainable. And there are ways to 
when the negative seasons come up, there are ways to deal with that and to overcome it. And that was a new, that was a new shift for me, a way new, brand new way of thinking. So that was one important, um, like catalyst. And then the other one was, I learned about the book, the secret, which talks about the law of attraction, basically mm -hmm. like your thoughts create your reality. Mm -hmm. And that's how I had that's the awareness. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, what a moment when you realize that you're like, Oh my gosh, I'm creating my experience of the entire world with my thoughts. Holy shit. Yeah. That's, that's how it was. <laughs> yeah. I think, I just think it's great. The podcast that, you know, the Tony Robbins, the, all of this stuff to, if you're feeling depressed or anxious or you have a problems, you know, with a relationship or whatever you have problems with just to take like your own little education with the YouTube and, and watch stuff, mm -hmm. educate yourself and have new thoughts. It'll have new thoughts. I always feel really so much better when I'm learning something. Me too. Really good. And that's healthy yeah. for you when, when you learn things and get new thoughts, like, mm -hmm physiologically it creates neural pathways in your brain it's called neuroplasticity mm -hmm. where like when you when you learn something new when you have a new experience when you step into the unknown mm -hmm. into your new world mm -hmm. that like literally makes your brain healthier you guys gotta step into the unknown you know ask yourself what what you want to do how you really want to be living your life and figure out ways to take those steps and understand that there's going to be tough times ahead, but that's normal and that's natural. And when you take ownership of your thoughts and your emotions, it gives you a new level, a new vantage point to see all of that from and navigate through life. And that's what we teach you how to do in the Friends and Film program. Like mm -hmm. we, we give you the tools and the, the, the exercises to develop your mental mindset, which is really important. One of the things that you've told me that really stuck to me is one of the biggest factors in being successful is mm -hmm. emotional mastery. And that's mm -hmm. like not really intuitive to, to the most people. Like a lot of people don't realize that. Like they, they, they think that all they have to do is work hard. Um, but if you want to get to like that higher level, it's emotional and mental mastery. They think they have to work hard or somebody else has to give them a job. Mm. Like it's outside of the, it's the world to, I got to get lucky or somebody's got to give it to me when it's really the best lives are created by you having the idea and making the decision and knowing that there's going to be challenges along the way, but the challenges are to be expected because that's how you're learning. That's how you're becoming extraordinary. So the challenges won't always feel good. And that's why you'll, you're going to experience fear, disappointment, um, that unknown, you know, rejection, uh, sit, do, messing up, saying the wrong thing, doing the wrong thing, actually screwing some things up, but that you don't want to uh, not try not, you, you don't want to avoid it. Mm. It's definitely part of the process mm -hmm. for, for doing anything. Yeah, that's where growth happens. That's how... That's how we make ourselves more valuable. Oh, for, for sure. One thing I was thinking about last night at three o'clock in the morning was this. So whatever you do in life, uh, whatever business you start, it's going to be an obsession and full of challenges and full of growth. Like you have the idea in your mind of what you want. And then, you know, it's like, okay, I just want this thing. How am I going to get it? And what you're always signing up for, no matter if you want to, you know, be a manager at a place or work on Wall Street or make a million dollars or, you know, work in film industry or be a top DP, the idea is enough. Just know that there's a ton of challenges and growth that's going to happen on the way there. And it's going to take time and it's all going to fall into place. And there's also, you also expect it to be like, so many moments of like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I don't know this is going to work. I don't know this. you know, just all of that stuff. That's all going to be part of the deal because you're doing something new that is extraordinary in your mind. Cause I know that nobody here is up to boring stuff. You know, you don't get like, Oh my gosh, I'm so like thinking about my retail job, <laughs> you know, we're thinking about, no, we're thinking about big goals, you know, winning that Oscar or, um, you know, 
getting on a TV show. Like that's my goal. How am I going to do that? It's worth it. That is perfect goal to have a big one and attach a money figure to it too. But whatever you do in life, just expect it's going to, there's all these things that you're going to be learning and doing and all these details to everything, a lot of little steps. And we expect it to be challenging. And therefore you won't be mad when it's challenging because it's going to be, and that's fine. That's how you grow. It's how you get better. It's how you learn it. So it's all part of the process. I think that's very useful to know. I think that people start trying to get in the business. And then as soon as the first hurdle happens or the first thing that happens, they're just like, oh no, oh, this thing happened. My car broke down or, you know, that person was mean to me. And the very first thing, the obstacle that they hit, they're just like, oh, and, uh, then the, a lot of people give up. Now, they're probably not meant to be in the film industry if they're going to give up that easily. But I'm just saying that, hey, expect that it's going to hurt sometimes, but that's part of it. So then you keep going. It's totally fine. Mm -hmm. In fact, that is anything worth doing is going to have a ton of like that kind of, you know, tr trials and tribulations, ups and downs. It's part of the process. You're going to have sleepless nights. You're going to doubt yourself. You're going to have not know what to do and wish it was different. It's just going to be part of the process. And it's, that's part of the process. Mm -hmm. I like to think when, when you feel those, when you step out of your comfort zone, that's how you know you're growing and you're making progress. Um, Can you always say like, getting out of your comfort zone is self-love that's you loving yourself and you like doing taking action to achieve what you really want to achieve your highest potential and that's really important yeah if you can be conscious of that while you're doing it then it really will feel like self-love if yeah. you're if you're not conscious of it though mm -hmm. then it's like oh my god i'm so scared and that's all that you'll experience but if you're like Oh, I'm scared and I'm noticing myself being scared and uh, I'm growing right now. Oh, yay. Yay. And it doesn't feel good actually, but yay. Yeah. Then, yeah, then you've got it. Now you're, you're really going to keep, be able to keep challenging yourself and you'll go to mm -hmm. very high heights. And that's a really far out feeling. I don't know, maybe, you, um, you've experienced this or not. Um, I have when I, I messed up on a job and afterwards, um, the deep, the deep, the DP um, sent me aside and talked to me. He's like, bro, like mm -hmm. you, you're not making us, you're making us look bad. Um, like Hurts. next time, like take this seriously. Yeah. It was just so painful. Mm -hmm. And I was afterwards, I was, he told me because he wanted me a, to do a good job. He told yeah. me because he cared about me and he wants me to a, a, uh, achieve more. Yeah. If he didn't, and, if he didn't care, he wouldn't even say anything. You just would not have showed up and you wouldn't have heard a word. Right. Exactly. He would, you wouldn't and, have showed up again. Mm -hmm. We were not going to hire you again then. And so I left that job thinking like, dang, do I really want to do this anymore? Or like, oh my, like, I don't know. Like that was just so painful. I don't know if I could like handle that again, or I don't know. Will I be prepared next time? So all these, all this internal crap was happening, Yeah. but <laughs> yeah. It, it was, it was far out because I was feeling like, okay, this is really uncomfortable. So I know I'm having a lot of growth right now. I know that this is making me extremely valuable. I'm developing this like tough skin and I'm acknowledging it as self-love. And so it's just a weird like paradox that happens where it's, it's painful, but you know that it's, I mean, maybe it's kind of like working out, like when you like feel the burn and like you feel sore afterwards, but it's like, after you know that it, it's like towards building your muscles and that how, that's how growth happens. I feel like that's kind of what happens to our emotions. It makes us stronger. Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah. That's why learning how to, uh, process it is, it's never going to be like, Oh, I'm so embarrassed. I don't want to even share this story. It's, it's going to be just more like, Oh, it's all for you. Everything is for you. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and therefore you're going to be willing to go out and experience more and do more and have more. Mm -hmm. And then you'll love yourself more. It won't feel, it's so funny because you're going to be experiencing the pain and then at the same time loving yourself. Interesting. But that's because you're doing so much out there in the world. That's how it's going to be. Mm -hmm. Discomfort, that's what they, that's, you know, that's really the word. You're going to experience discomfort on your way to growth and in a most amazing life. Mm. All right, so we will wrap this up. Um, thank you. That was, I think we're pretty good together. Heck yeah. 
<laughs> Thanks, everybody. Peace out. Peace out. Thanks for listening today. And if you have a moment, could you please leave me a review? I would love that. And make sure you head over to friendsandfilm.com slash join and sign up for my free mini course on what you need to know to find opportunities and start making film and acting work come to you. I'll see you next week.